in case uh, people are not familiar with uh, why we introduced subdomain gateways, I prepared a short uh, uh, section with theory and then a quick demo. So uh, I'm Lytle, I'm working on IPFS, uh, mostly IPFS in, in web browsers, the way we represent IPFS resources and uh, trying to make it better. And uh, I was uh, helping with uh, implementing some domain gateways uh, in Go IPFS 0.5. So something to, I think the, the, the gist of the problem is that the CID, the content identifier in IPFS, it specifies the content root. Uh, most of people think about uh, files and directories. So if you have a website, uh, that is a directory and you have index HTML inside of that. So the root of the, that root uh, directory has an identifier, that's CID, uh, and that's the main directory of your website. So historically, when you put your directory with your website on IPFS, you could load it from uh, path gateways. Um, and those uh, gateways looked like this. You had a host name on, of the gateway and then namespace, immutable IPFS, content identifier. And that was the root, your content root, and your website was under that. And the problem was that was a single origin for all con uh, on content routes, which meant uh, all websites loaded from that gateway, that way, shared the same origin uh, sandbox, which meant all websites had uh, the same uh, cookie jar or local storage, but also uh, they had shared uh, permissions for things like camera, microphone, video, uh, and others. Uh, everything was scoped per origin, which was really problematic. If you granted permission to one website, every other IPFS website had uh, that permission. Another problem was uh, the content root was here, while the URL root is here. And that was the problem for very popular uh, things like static website generators, which often created uh, absolute uh, links and those links expected to root be here, not here. And that introduced a lot of problems for us. So subdomain gateways uh, tackle both problems. Uh, you still have your own host name. However, the namespace is moved to a subdomain and the content identifier is the very first label on the DNS uh, name, which means each CID produced unique origin per every content route. It's a super important, it aligns IPFS uh, abstractions with uh, how a web security model works, how it's implemented in web browsers. And we don't, like, thanks to this, we don't need to do any additional work. It just, uh, we get uh, this isolation for free. Every content identify uh, route gets own sandbox. And it also means you can see here, the root is the same for both URL and uh, con uh, IPFS uh, content root. So no problem with uh, previewing static website uh, generator builds and things like that. Um, so that's fine. How can you enable subdomain gateway for your host name? So in Go IPFS 0.5, you got a config file and there was already a section about the gateway configuration. In this release, we've added public gateway section. And it's like a map, which has a ne host name as a key. And the value is just an object with additional uh, flags and uh, settings. In this example, uh, I'm using example.com uh, as the name of your gateway. And all you need to do is just like define the host name and then enable subdomains for that host name by setting use subdomains to true and specify which paths should be exposed on that host name. You may just want immutable paths and you don't want IPNS, or maybe you want IPFS and IPNS, and, but don't want to expose a, API. That's up to you. Uh, so that's how you control it. You can also use one liner on command line. Um, it's multiple lines here, but I just split it for readability. Uh, however, you, you can do this just that way. And if I'm lucky, I will make a quick demo of the very thing. So uh, let's say I have, uh, I have IPFS 
and I initialize the new repo and I applied that very config. And just to verify, I really did that. I can see in the configuration, you can see it's here. So if I start my node now, it will get interesting because it's now exposing a um, gateway on a local host on this port. So just to uh, not bore you too much, I will jump uh, directly to the browser demo. So if we open a Chromium browser and use this uh, gateway port as an HTTP proxy, because that's an in interesting feature of uh, Go, uh, IPFS um, 0.5, the gateway port is now HTTP proxy, which enables interesting things like this one, because you can see I'm starting Chromium with empty profile, so it looks like a new user. I set a proxy to be a local gateway, and then I just asked it, open this uh, URL. So the URL is the old school uh, path gateway at example.com, it's IPFS, content hash and uh, then a path. So let's open it and let's open it in a new screen. And hopefully, yeah, that they did not lie like this content discovery was fast. <laughs> so that's a pretty cool demonstration, I believe. Uh, if you look closely at the address bar, what happened? It's not the URL I asked for. I asked for this path one and I got something else. So let's, let's try to figure out why, why, why is that? Uh, did I copy it? No, I'm just even bad at copying. So let me cheat a little bit. I got uh, stuff for copying here. Um, okay. So this is uh, the old school URL for a path under a domain. And when you set up your subdomain gateway, it will handle requests of the old gateways. So if you open it, the CID will get moved to a subdomain, but that's not the thrilling thing. It's just like swapping places. What's interesting is that if you try to load a content that has an all CID V0, uh, the CID V0 are those uh, hashes that start with QM. Everyone is familiar with them. Uh, the problem is those are in base 58 and those hashes are case sensitive and uh, browsers uh, force lowercase on the host names, which mean they will break the hash if you put a, this case sensitive uh, representation in a subdomain. So we support uh, representing CIDs as base 32. However, people may still have those old links and they may want to switch to a new subdomain gateway and they want the links to still work. So here you can see, I, if I, I open uh, an old school link with the case sensitive hash, it, the subdomain gateway, uh, the native subdomain gateway in Go IPFS will automatically convert CIDV0 to CIDV1 in base32, which is safe for use in subdomains and it will return that uh, to the browser as a redirect. Um, so that's the main feature. It works also for IPNS names, which can be represented as CIDV1 in base32 with libp2p key multicodec. Um, feel free to explore. I will stop my demo uh, here. I will just uh, point you in if you are interested in running your own uh, subdomain gateway or gateway in general, in Go IPFS repo, in docs, there's a config file which has a documentation of all those options and the gateway, public gateways, uh, has a very long uh, doc, which is not just description of the parameters, but it has at the very end gateway re recipes. So there are some pre-built commands that you can just like run to set up a specific type of a gateway that you want, not just like subdomain, but also if you want to just host a DNS link without hosting public hashes of other people. There are uh, ready examples there. Um, 
that's it on my end.